In this video, we'll be using the Network Management Card 2 boot monitor to recover and upgrade firmware. For this, you will need a Generation 2 network card, such as in the AP9631 card pictured here, and its cable, the 940-0299 cable, which plugs into the console port pictured here. If you are using a PDU with a second generation network management card, you will need to use cable 940-0144 and connect it to the console port. Additionally, if your computer does not have a DB9 serial port, you may need a USB to serial adapter and the drivers to support that adapter. Next, you will need to configure a terminal emulation program such as TerraTerm or HyperTerminal to the communications port for your DB9 serial port or USB adapter. You'll then afterwards configure the communication support settings to the following. You'll set it to 57,600 for the bits per second or baud rate. You will then select eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. Once the terminal emulation software is properly configured, you'll next need to press the reset button on your network management card or rack PDU. To press the reset button, all you will need is a paperclip or similar tool to press the reset button on the card or PDU. If done properly, you will then see the LED lights flashing alternating between amber and green. Once you've done that, you know that the card is properly rebooting. Once the card is rebooting, press enter on the hyperterminal program to get to the boot monitor prompt. Factory Reset will reset the card to its default settings. To do so, type in factory underscore reset and then hit enter. Next, you will confirm that by typing factory underscore reset underscore confirm and enter again to begin the reset process of the card and reset it back to all default values. To download the firmware for your Network Management Card 2, go to the APC.com website and under the Support section, you'll find where you can download the latest firmware for your card. Once you've located the firmware for the Network Management Card 2, please select the appropriate type of UPS you'll be using it with. If you accidentally pick the wrong version, it will not harm the card, but it will not let the card communicate with the UPS properly and you will not be able to get information from it. The firmware that you download will be a self-extracting executable. Please be sure to run it and pay attention to where it extracts the files to. You will need that shortly. Once it's done with the extraction, you can go ahead and close the window that pops up for the wizard to do the installation. We're almost at the end of the process now. Next, we'll go back to the terminal emulation program and we'll run the command X modem and hit enter and you'll start to see the letter C up here a couple times. That's indicating that it is working. Next, we'll begin the upload process. In TerraTerm, go to File, then Transfer, and then X Modem, and select Send. Then you're going to select the firmware version that you had already extracted on your computer. You're going to start with the bootmon file, which will have the word bootmon in the name of the file. Please note that it is important that you select the file with the word bootmon in the file name. You wait for this process to complete. Once that's done, you'll then repeat the process with the AOS file. The letters AOS will be in the file name. Lastly, you'll want to do what's called the application module. The name of that file will depend upon the type of firmware for the UPS you're using. For smart UPSs, it will have SUMX. For a Symmetra single phase, it will have SY. For a Symmetra three phase unit, it will have SY3P. And for a rack ATS, it will have ATS4G. Once all three firmware files have been successfully uploaded to the card, 
You'll then be able to close out the terminal emulation and reboot the card, and your firmware update will be complete.